Just we'll call the public system. service meeting together. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Item number three, adoption of the agenda. Motion, motion to adopt. Agenda. Support, Van Sickle. Call for a vote. That's a pretty close. Motion passes 12 to 0. Item number four, approval of the minutes. So moved, Paul. Nard. All in favor, vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. <laughs> Item 5, public participation. This is an opportunity for public participation for those that wish to speak on any item for three minutes in an item of which is on today's agenda. The second opportunity will be at the end of the meeting in which you wish to speak on any issue. Item number six, presentations. DIA, update, Salvador, DIA director, motion to receive and file. So move, Paul. Support now. All in favor? Uh, we don't vote to the- Don't vote on this? Okay. You're up in the line, Lee. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, I just want to start by thanking the commission for allowing us to come here and uh, talk a little bit about the museum, the work that we have been doing in the last uh, in the last year. I have with me uh, my colleague Julie McFarland, who is the executive director of Public Affairs and Community Engagement, that would be part of this uh, pre presentation. So. With that, uh, we're going to run through our slides, and uh, I hope we have a good conversation with questions after um, our presentation. So, I uh, wanted to start by uh, talking about the, the huge success that the exhibition Van Gogh in America has had. We have welcomed over 230,000 people into, into the building to see the exhibition. It was um, unbelievably exciting to have so many visitors after COVID-19, after the pandemic, engaging not only with this uh, special Van Gogh show, but also with the entire collection. Just to, to let you know, the exhibition brought 74 Van Goghs from all over, all over the world, which is um, basically the most important Van Gogh exhibition that has happened in the world in the 21st century, except the Van Gogh exhibitions that the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam or organizing, organizes. So that was uh, really exciting, very well, very, very well received. We have coverage from the press around the world, including the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, and many, many TVs and other uh, news outlets. Here are some, some facts about the exhibition and um, Uh, just as want to walk you through them, uh, you know, we had uh, uh, 55,000 vehicles parked in our parking structure. The um, uh, exhibition, uh, every uh, exhibition visitor had uh, a gallery guide that we gave to each, each one of them for them to keep. And we distribute over 190,000. Uh, our cafe did extremely well. We almost uh, sold 7,000 7, baguettes and sandwiches, over 2,000 uh, glasses of wine, etc., etc. The museum shop sold 4,700 catalogs, exhibition catalogs. Many, many people came to the show and they were so impressed that they wanted to take a piece of it. And a way to do that was to buy the exhibition, exhibition catalog, which is very unusual to sell so many catalogs in a show like this. Uh, we had uh, over 10,000 codes uh, checked in the four code check stations. 70, 70 staff members participated uh, as volunteers. 
And uh, our chief operating officer, who was there almost every day, walked 25,000 steps every day just to help with the, uh, you know, directing the flows and rivers of people who were coming into, into the uh, exhibition. It was really exciting to be uh, there. It really brought the exhibition, the, uh, the team, the DIA team together. And uh, as you know, we were celebrating that we are the first museum in the United States to buy a painting by Van Gogh in 1922. So we celebrated a 100 year anniversary. Uh, during the time of the exhibition, we, we hired uh, around 75, 80 part-time employees to help us with uh, the operations of the museum, the visitor experience. 24 of those em employees were kept and they are transitioning into our uh, permanent permanent staff. Uh, these uh, new employees were so excited to work, be part of this amazing story of the Van Gogh exhibition. And there you can see uh, an image of the, um, of the uh, Woodward entrance of the museum the day that we opened the exhibition to the staff and to our members. And uh, the staff is at the front steps of the museum just cheering and getting ready for what was and had been an incredible success story. This is one of the reasons, uh, and there are other many reasons, uh, why the DIA is an amazing museum, but uh, we recently received this extraordinary honor by USA Today to be named the best art museum in the country. And I am so excited that we were able to receive this uh, incredible uh, award. It's an incredible achievement, but I'm very, very excited about uh, the museum, especially the staff. They really deserve this extraordinary recognition for the amazing work that uh, we do here. We are here to serve our communities, the residents of Macon County, the residents of Oakland and Wayne, to make sure they have extraordinary, extraordinary uh, experiences. That is part, that is our having an extraordinary experience at the DIA is part of our strategic plan. And all of you in your folders have our new, newly approved strategic plan for, for the organization that was approved by the board last, last of October, uh, sorry, last August. And uh, in it, the first pillar or the first goal of the museum is to provide every, every DIA visitor an extraordinary experience on site, online, and in the community. And we are uh, very present in all the communities, but especially in Macomb County, to make sure they know what the museum does for them, but at the same time to invite them and to come, to have them come to the DIA uh, through our school and, and senior, our senior program. Another part of our strategic plan is to make sure that we have an organization that produces extraordinary education, exhibition, and public programs, programs that we acquire works of art that are of relevance to all our, our communities, and that we continue uh, to let people know about this so we can elevate the national and international uh, profile of, of the museum. So these are some of the, uh, of the goals of our strategic plan. I don't wanna go through all of them today. We have a lot to cover, but you have the publication of this very, very important document. And I'll be happy to answer questions either today or uh, whenever you feel you wanna talk to us about any of the aspects discussed in this uh, important, important uh, document. With that, I'm gonna ask my colleague, Julie McFarland, to come to the podium and continue with the presentation. Thank you, Salvador, and good afternoon. Thank you for having us out here um, on this snowy afternoon in what I'm sure is a busy agenda today. Um, we really appreciate the time that we get to come out here and share everything that's happening at the museum and the many ways we bring experiences um, from the DIA out to the communities. Um, so many of you will be familiar with this slide. This is sort of the framework um, for our agreement, um, our millage agreement with Macomb County. Um, I want to take a minute, though, and talk a little bit about free general admission. Um, we usually talk about free general admission and give the hours, um, but I want to give you a little idea of what the week looks like at the DIA. So Wednesday night, we have a free lecture um, with an artist who's in our current printmaking exhibition. 
Friday, we have um, teens, programming for teens. We have a teen art council um, that has uh, young people from Macomb County on it, um, and they design programming for other teens. Uh, so this Friday, um, teens can register to come down to the museum. Um, it's part of their general free general admission. Um, they'll get a walkthrough from our curatorial department in the printmaking exhibition. They'll get a chance to make some prints of their own to take home, and they will enjoy a lovely pizza dinner. Um, Friday Night Live, we have twice a month right now. We're really building back our programming. So two times a month, you can come down to the museum with your free general admission. You can enjoy live music. Um, we have a solo performer this Friday, a double bass player and composer. Um, Saturday, we have a guest artist in our studio. She is going to be doing risograph printing, which I have no idea what that is, but I might come and find out myself. Um, and again, you come down to the museum, you can go into the studio, participate in that, and bring something home with you. Um, also on Sunday, we have pop-up printmaking in Prentice Court. Um, this is courtesy of Signal Return. Um, they are a letterpress shop in the Eastern Market. So they'll be coming and sharing that craft. And again, um, participants, you know, anyone who comes to the museum can uh, make a print to take home with them as well. We have a full program in our Detroit Film Theater. So I just wanted to give you an idea kind of what happens at the museum. When we talk about free general admission, of course, there's our wonderful collection, but we do all kinds of things in the museum to sort of bring that to life and activate it. Um, at the end of the month, we have a special family programming on Saturday, March 25th. It is a puppet performance, um, and that is free with general admission as well. Um, and it's really great for families with kids six years old and up. So just a little bit more about free general admission than we usually share at these meetings. So um, moving on to, um, thank you, the school program. Um, again, you know, we're really building back um, since the pandemic. Prior to the pandemic, we had over 17,000 K through 12 students come to the museum, enjoy free admission, enjoy um, really specific gallery guided tours that are um, designed to enhance uh, what they're doing in the classrooms um, and free bus transportation. We will either reimburse the school for the use of their own buses if they prefer, or we will book and pay for buses um, from the DIA, to and from the DIA. Uh, so we're building back, we're at about 3,800 students, um, a little over 3,800 students in 2022. Um, we are getting close to field trip season, so uh, the time slots are getting pretty booked up right now through the end of the school year. Um, we have a lot of Macomb County groups coming, and then we also do this in the summer. So if you know of like a summer program, a summer camp, we have special summer escapes, um, tours for kids that are um, like a range of ages rather than grade level specific. So this work goes on all year long. Um, our senior program, we had 30 senior groups come to the museum last year. Again, building back prior to the pandemic, we were at about 68. So if you know of senior groups, rec centers who would like to come to the museum, uh, we'd be happy to have them. They can come for a docent led tour. They get a free coffee coupon, which they love. Um, and also, if it's a group of 25 or more, we'll take care of the transportation for that, too. Um, we also do occasionally, um, we have a group who's interested in coming to something at the museum that doesn't necessarily fall into the senior group category. Uh, we recently had a group from Macomb County come to see a free event that we had at the Detroit Film Theater. This was an event in partnership with the Detroit Free Press, and it was a film screening of um, the rebellious life of Miss Rosa Parks, and it was followed by a panel discussion that included uh, Soledad O'Brien. So we had a group in Macomb County who was really interested in come to see that, um, so we provided a bus. Uh, for that group. And I think last week in the Warren Weekly, there's a little article about that group trip. So we're happy to book those as well. Um, community partnership programs. Um, 
You may be familiar with our partners in public art. Commissioner Lucido and I were talking about the beautiful mural uh, that we did in East Point with Macomb County artist Wendy Popko. Um, and really how that has like blossomed, the community's really embraced it, enhanced it. Um, so we're excited about that work. We have two that we're finishing up from last year. Um, the top one is the Mount Clemens one. Uh, the second one is gonna be, um, I think they're actually gonna be um, paintbrush to wall on April 1st, let's cross our fingers. Um, that one is in St. Clair Shores. Uh, they're doing a little more work on that design. You see the water tower there. Apparently that water tower will be meeting its demise soon. Um, so they've asked us to take that out. So we'll be revising that design, but look for that coming up. Um, and then, back, uh, yes. And then we have 2023 locations, uh, Lenox Township and the Clinton Macomb Public Library. We've been doing site visits in the last week just to check out that space um, and make sure that it's, it's feasible for the project. So um, partners in public art, we will post the application for that program. Um, the application I think goes up September 1st for the next year. So I'll make sure to give y'all a reminder when that's coming up. Um, and then another partners or another community partnership program um, of course, Inside Out, hopefully by now we're in our 14th year, everyone's familiar with that one. Um, so these are the locations we'll be in 2023. Um, and we are meeting with all of these partners in the next couple weeks to give them ideas about how to really make these installations their own, um, bike tours, um, sidewalk chalk events, and, and whatever else they can come up with and we can support. Um, so that's inside out and the application for that goes up, I believe June 1st. So I'll be sure and keep you up to date on that. Uh, we have other community partnership programs that we do. We have a community group art making show. We work with Care of Southeast Michigan um, in the museum and in the community on that. Uh, we do work with the Anton Art Center. Um, I, I think I'm probably forgetting something, but. Hopefully you get the idea, um, looking for ways to bring the DIA out into the community. Um, so I'm gonna finish up with a little bit of information on um, one exhibition uh, that is up right now and then an upcoming exhibition. And as much as I'd like to fumble my way through this, talking about art in front of the director is probably risky, so I'll let Salvador <laughs> give you the details. You talk about art like nobody else, you're very good. So, but two, two shows that are free, now, for the residents of Macomb County, it's our printmaking in the 21st century exhibition, which shows the, some of the works of art that the museum had acquired on paper in the last 10 years. Really an amazing, an amazing exhibition featuring some local artists like Judith Bowman. And uh, we are opening in May James Barner. This is uh, a retrospective on this uh, amazing photographer from Africa. We're doing this exhibition with the Serpentine Gallery in London. We are the only venue in the United States to do it. There's already a lot of in, uh, interest from the press to cover it. You know, James Barnard is one of these greatest um, uh, contemporary art um, artists that uh, is only 94 years young. And uh, he is responsible for bringing color photography in Africa, among other things. We're very, very excited about this, this, two, uh, this upcoming exhibition opening in May during, during the summer. Uh, and with that, uh, this is the contact information for uh, our team. And uh, you have it in your folders. And happy to um, answer any questions that you, that you might have at this point. Thank you so much for the attention. Commissioner Brown, thank you, uh, thank you, Sadler and Judy, for coming down. We appreciate having you here. You know, I will say that the DIA, unlike other regional partnerships we're sometimes involved with, they want they always want to come out to the board and update the board. And I pushed them off at least a month because our agendas were so full previously. So I forgive me for pushing you out, but I never have to ask you to come out. You're always always in my inbox asking when the next opportunity to come and update the board on what you've done down at the DA, so I'm appreciative of that. Um, one of the uh, other items I noted in the paper I was reading this weekend was uh, you have uh, um, Life to the Limit coming, a, a story about the film about the war in Ukraine. 
that's coming before. And uh, that has interest to our population here in Macomb County, especially in, in, in Warren and Southern Sterling Heights, where we've got a, a, quite a, a population mix down there of, of Ukrainians who have welcomed in immigrants through the war to accommodate them while they get their business in order over there. And uh, so that'll be of interest to the community. It's on March 20th. I think I'm going to try to get down there if I can and call our old friend Andre Duje, our friend from uh, Warren down there, who's uh, represented the area well. And uh, so that's a good thing. And, um, you know, the DA has been very helpful. And again, Commissioner, if you've got groups in your community or your senior center or some other organization that you're a part of that you want to get down there, they're more than willing to work with you to accommodate that, provide the transportation, get your get your community down there and it, take advantage of an asset that, you know, the county taxpayers paid for with a millage. And uh, we were a key reason why that the DAA, you know, came through the tough times that it had as the whole region did during the depression and when Detroit went bankrupt. But um, we're really glad to have you there. And I'm always taking opportunities to promote it. As some of you may know, you were invited two years ago to a, um, they had the exhibition about the, the our design Detroit. What was it, was it called? It was designed uh, Detroit style. Detroit style. And my father being a part of the engineers that made a lot of those wood cars back in the day was wood models was interested in that. It was something that the area liked. So we hosted an event down there and we took people that we invited down to the DIA and we're going to do something similar. We're putting together an announcement will be coming out soon, but it's behind the scenes and take a any our aspect looking at the DA from behind the scenes, the restoration, things that went into this thing, the Van Gogh exhibit, which was outstanding. I went down there to see that it was packed with people. It was, um, and how much did that exhibit cost to bring that DA exhibit here? So what was the cost? It had to be quite a lot. <laughs> several million dollars, sir. Sir, several million. It's very expensive. Uh, the transportation of these works of art. Uh, is very costly the logistics uh, just you know some of the works have insurance values over 200 million dollars so just just imagine uh, the premium on the insurance the logistics of bringing these works from Paris from Madrid from London from Berlin it's it's a really really expensive uh, operation so we have to raise a lot of money uh, to be able to do this to this to do this exhibition is it all been shipped out yet, or is it still in, still packaging, ready to ship out? It's a complicated process, I understand. Uh, m most of the things are back in their uh, museums. I mean, museums, generally speaking, don't like to lend their Van Goghs because when someone goes to a museum, the first thing they want to see is their Van Goghs. So uh, pieces like Starry Night that we had here for the residents of Macomb County, this is, this is something that is in Paris, that people, when go to Paris, they want to see uh, the, tower, the Eiffel Tower, uh, the Louvre, and they want to see Starry Night at Museo d'Orsay. So we had it here for Thanksgiving and Christmas, and it was just amazing. So this is very, very, um, very expensive thing to do. We, it took us uh, uh, six years to put it together, but uh, it's been a huge success uh, locally, nationally, and internationally. There is an exhibition catalog that is a testimony of, of the great work that the DI has done. And we are thankful for to the residents of Macon, Oakland, Wayne counties, um, because uh, the Tri County has been amazing. Without you, we will not be able to do these kinds of exhibitions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Lucido. I thank you guys for coming out. Um, I'm definitely a huge supporter of the DIA, but I did have a couple of questions about the millage. Um, how much of your revenue or how much of your costs are covered by the millage? Like what percentage approximately? So our, uh, thank you for the question. Our operating cost um, is around $39 million and that is the millage um, covers the millage from Macomb Wayne and Oakland Covent covers around 69% of our operating costs. Okay. My second question is to, is I know you, the millage is, you know, Wayne, Macomb, and Oakland, but why um, is the county to the west or the south not included in, you know, in the millage? Was that ever considered uh, having those other two counties be part of it? Uh, at the time when this was uh, uh, approved in 2012, I was not the director, we, and, but I believe that 
the uh, the surveys, the information that we had was that uh, if, you know, residents from other counties would not be supportive of this knowledge or, or wanna. Yeah, and you know, we have had conversations in 2012 and 2020 about, you know, the possibility of including another county or making that ask. Um, you know, we provide a lot of services for the tri-county area and, you know, part of what goes into these decisions is that, um, you know, capacity in the museum, and we want to make sure that we can continue delivering quality for the three counties that have supported us for so long and, you know, not do anything to, to impede that work. So I think right. that definitely played into our um, just going back to the, the tri-county region um, the first time and the second. Right. Thank you. That's all I had. Commissioner, thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Kraft. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for both for being here. Like Chair Brown said, you guys are always open and transparent to us, and you come every time we call, and you show up even when we don't call. So I appreciate it. And for the new commissioners, whenever you have a question or anything like that, reach out to them because they will respond. They've given me all sorts of data, and Commissioner Drillette, when he was here before, I mean, we've had more graphs about your spending than I've ever even imagined to, to see. Um, but my question is about the school program. Is that probably Julie or Salvador going to prove me wrong? <laughs> um, you guys have the student count. What's the, the district count? Do you have a, a count on where those students are coming from district-wise? So I don't have that available with me today, but we have been digging into that on all three counties, just trying to look at what the geographic spread looks like. <clears throat> so um, we're going to be working on year-end reporting for 2022, and that will include, you know, we'll be looking at what counties are represent or what um, districts are representative, um, and we've already started doing some particular outreach to districts that we don't see as much. Uh, so that work is ongoing, but I can provide that data um, so you, everyone here can see it. Thank you. Yeah, just out of curiosity, you know, what are they coming more from Wayne County districts? Is it Macomb County districts? You know, whatever that may be. And then I guess a follow up kind of to what you said with bringing the turnout, bringing the children there. Is it compared to pre-COVID to post-COVID, are you guys doing anything differently to recruit schools to come and visit? So it's, it's an ongoing process. Um, we are building back. Uh, during the pandemic, we did virtual programming, um, and that was quite popular. But as the pandemic has waned, we find that, you know, people have had enough screen time. Um, we find that, you know, we continue to talk to schools and principals. I was at the Macomb uh, MISD superintendents meeting this fall, um, talking to the superintendents and just really trying to figure out what the schools need. Um, I think there's been a lot of lost learning time, um, which may impede some districts from, from taking the, the time off of instruction to come to the museum. But, you know, we're continuing to talk to all of our um, contacts in the education community and make sure that whatever we're offering is tuned in to what they need. So we may find we need to do something different. You know, if school districts, um, you know, need that instruction time, we may have to look at other ways to get, um, you know, to get this to the students. So for now, we're really seeing that what they seem to want to do is come back. To the museum, so the virtual program seems to be waning a little bit, but we'll keep an eye on it, eye on it, and let you know, you know what what our plans are. Thank you. You guys are a very valuable out of the classroom learning asset. So thank you both for coming today. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Kraft. Uh, Commissioner Romano. Thank you, Chair. Uh, more of a statement than probably a, a question, but I'm not sure which channel it was on, Channel Four, Channel Seven, but they had a statement there that said three things that you must do if you come to Michigan, and not necessarily in this order, but these were the three things you must do if you come to Michigan. One was to see Mackinac Island, which we know was a pearl. The second one was to see the Detroit Riverfront, and the third one was to go to the DIA. So with that, I give you accolades. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Nice job, you. that's all I had, thank um, you, Chair. The, the difference is that people who come from outside of Michigan have to pay to come to the DIA, <laughs> while the residents of Macon County don't have to, to pay. And uh, I am really appreciative of, of the comment, and um, 
uh, we're happy to provide this service. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Romano. A couple of questions. <coughs> There's only three counties, Wayne, Oakland, Macomb, that participated in the millage that was passed. Is, does the DIA do any annual financial reports on how this money is spent from all these millages that you have received? Yes, Is there absolutely. any transparency yeah. so we can tell our voters how this millage money was spent? Absolutely, it's in our financials and on our website. Absolutely, yes, we can we can share this with you. It's public information. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Second question: Is there any resident of the three counties that it's free for admission? Is there any events that is not free? Uh, there are some events that are program under the groups auxiliary groups that the museum has. For example, there is an auxiliary group that um, works with contemporary art. There is an auxiliary group that works with Islamic art. So this, this group organize their uh, events. These are generally not public. One needs to be part of, of these uh, auxiliary groups to participate in those events. But the majority, the great majority of events that the museum organizes are during our hours of operation are free. If a resident from Macomb or Oakland or Wayne come down there and they don't know it's a closed event, are they turned away or are they accept? The closed events only happen after hours, not during public hours. So if there is a private event organized by this auxiliary group, it would be at, at a, not in the public hours. Okay. So we don't turn people backwards in when they come to us. There's always... Um, the museum is always open, open for them, yes. Well, thank you very much for showing up today. Thank you for your presentation. Yes, absolutely. Thank, thank you so much. And uh, we, we would like to continue being as transparent as we are. If you have any questions or you want to come to the museum or, um, or anything, but please send your feedback. Send us your advice. We want our school programs, our senior programs, and our community partners programs to be super successful. You know your constituencies. You know what they need. We want to meet your constituencies exactly where their needs are so we can provide amazing, extraordinary experiences as our strategy plan that you all have says. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, good. Item number seven, uh, department recommendations. Uh, yeah. Number sure. A is a contract. We have to vote to receive I'm them. sorry. Call for the vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. Now that I was corrected, let's go to item number 7A. Uh, contract between Merit Network. This is a broadband assessment consulting services with Moonshot Broadband access to data collection study costing us about 83000 Vicky's here and Jaco. Can you give us your comment? Sure. I'll make the motion to refer to full board. I'll support it. All in favor? After the presentation. All right. Well, good afternoon, commissioners. So in front of you is the contract for Merit Network. Um, we are calling this the broadband study internally. Um, it is a partnership between planning and economic development as well as information technology. This was something that was on our radar prior to a lot of the activity that was taking place with SEMCOG and the Tri-County Summit. Um, really looking historically, the last time we did a broadband study as a county was maybe back 2009, did I go? So it, it was dated. Um, and if we go back 2009, when we look at technology back then, there's definitely been enhancements. But really the study is to take a look at some of the deficiencies that we've got here in the county. I think with COVID and the pandemic, it definitely exacerbated the problem with connectivity, being able to get online, whether it was school districts, our businesses, as well as remote workers. So from a planning and economic development perspective, this is pretty um, important to us, um, but it's twofold. It's also looking at accessibility. Um, there may be areas and pockets within Macomb County where we've got accessibility, but then it's the conversation of affordability. Um, are people able to access the internet? 
Uh, so in order to really make this um, come to fruition, you know, it does take that partnership. Um, as I mentioned, I've got Jake o here from our IT department. Um, as well as we've brought um, our partner at SEMCOG, which I know many of you have had that conversation with SEMCOG as it correlates to this broadband study beyond just the boundaries of Macomb, but looking at it from a region. Um, and then also today we've got Merit Network to talk about their specific proposal. Uh, so with that, Jaco, I don't know if you want to provide a few comments. Good afternoon, commissioners. I just want to talk a little bit about the financial side of this. Uh, we put $100,000 in our budget uh, for this year uh, to start this study, and we had a conversation with the board um, and a few of our departments and decided to put that number up. Uh, the uh, contract came back $83,000. We're also asking to add $17,000 for contingency, which, which makes up the Hundred thousand. Main reason for that is it is uh, uh, it is really a big unknown for us exactly what this is going to look like. Um, as Vicky mentioned, it is uh, important for us to move this whole process forward, and uh, there's a lot of grant money available from the state of Michigan over the next uh, few years, and we obviously want to be ready uh, to participate in that. The um, contract didn't go out to bid. Uh, main reason for that is Merritt has been working with uh, the Tri-County area um, on uh, providing this study and doing this study. Uh, we also have the ability to purchase uh, their contract off of um, the state of Michigan My Deal contract. So that was already bid out by the state of Michigan. So that's how we want to approach this. And uh, just wanted to give you that background. Commissioner Brown. Thank you, it's Jake Goa. Uh, the, the study is important. All three counties are working on this and we're talking now about collectively all three counties going and asking the federal government for a grant, a block grant that would go to SEMCOG to help feed all three of our county's initiatives like what we're doing here today and um, that's a work in progress we're pulling some pieces together on that now but um, there's, you know, there's, 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 there's a lot of money in the system now we're making a real effort to close the gaps not only in availability of service but affordability of service and that's a that's an issue in, in throughout the whole county even right here in our city here Mount Clemens there there are gaps that you'd be surprised at and so we're trying to seek out this, and this is a way to move us forward in that direction. Just today, I got a letter of request from Comcast to support a Robin grant that they're doing, which will benefit Macomb County. And uh, I'm, I'm gonna send that off. So there's a lot of activity in this space, and I'm glad that our county's right in, right in pace where it needs to be because they started early. I mean, it's been a couple, year and a half maybe, maybe a year ago. and. Uh, we're right where we need to be, and this will help move that along. So I totally support this uh, um, this item, and uh, hope that you do as well. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Brown. Any other commissioners? If not, call for the vote. Motion passes twelve to zero. Thank you. We go to seven B, like to consolidate B, C, D, E, F together. Support. Motion to move that to full board. Brian. Good afternoon, Chairman, and good afternoon, Commissioners. These are all cost share agreements uh, with the community, um, Shelby Township, for the ongoing and annual maintenance and uh, Upgrades, if there's any, to the tap grant uh, locations that they had uh, applied for as a community. Uh, there's four different, or actually five different crossings uh, uh, within Shelby Township. Uh, so this would be a standard cost share with that community. Once again, uh, there's technology devices that are going to be installed at these particular locations. 
a rectangular rapid pedestrian flashing beacon that's solar powered and then an overhead crosswalk that's illuminated that takes power. So these are the costs that are incurred uh, that will be passed on to the township through this cost share. So seeking approval on those. Any questions? Commissioner Brown. Are the maintenance, are these installations, are these intersections or the crosswalks or whatever they happen to be there, are those done by our in-house team? The project is put together by the township. Um, I believe it would just be, we, we would charge out for the, yes, we do that internally, so we would charge out for the actual installation and then the cost associated with that would be charged charge to the TAP grant, and then the maintenance, ongoing annual maintenance is the cost share, which would be obviously the uh, annual cost. As that but, we, but we set up the, we contract for the uh, the maintenance and all that, correct? Yes, that is done internally. So as an Act 51 agency, we are the fiduciary for the townships uh, as an Act 51 agent. All right. Very good. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Thank Commissioner. you, Commissioner Brown. No other speakers? Call for the vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. Thank you. Item number 8A, resolution of support for MDOT, Transportation Alternative Program TAP, Grant for Jefferson Spillway Pedestrian Bridge and Shared Use Path. Byron? Yes, this is a seeking approval of a resolution um, for a TAP grant uh, submittal uh, in support for it for Harrison Township, uh, Jefferson, uh, across the spillway. Um, this is a project that benefits the nearby communities uh, with a more complete and safer uh, pedestrian and bicycle trail. Um, so this is uh, done, and once again, uh, we are the Act 51 agency for the townships as a community. So seeking approval uh, of the resolution for this project moving forward to request TAP grant monies. Chair, I'll make the motion to refer the resolution to full board. Support by NARD. Vote. Oh, I'm sorry. Commissioner Zenner. Thank you, Chair. I didn't see, a, I may have missed it, the full cost on this. I only saw the TAP grant, or was that the full cost? No, there, at this level, there's a higher level estimate. Um, we're, we're seeking, I believe, a little over $1.1 million as far as uh, federal funds, and the remaining balance would be the match. Um, and that would be a distribution to us and the township. Um, so there, there's a higher level estimate. And then once this gets submitted, um, if they do get approval, obviously that's drilled down to more exact uh, numbers uh, once we get the final designs and stuff in. So, but we're looking at probably just under a $2 million project in total. So do you have any idea what, how much the TAP grant will be? Uh, looking at just over 1.1 million as far as seeking funding through the TAP grant. All right, thank you very much, and uh, thank you, Chair. You're welcome, Commissioner. No other speakers call. Thank Motion you. passes 12 to 0. Thank you. Thank you. Item number uh, 9A, this is a charter township uh, correspondence uh, notice of a public hearing on March the 21st, Township Planning Commission. Motion received by support. Call for the vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. I'm number 10. I don't see any public here, but I'll read it anyway. This is the opportunity. If anybody here I can't see, you can speak on any item for three minutes, be it none. Any commissioner comments? No speakers? How about a motion? Motion to adjourn. Board. Towards center. Vote. <coughs> Yeah, this is going to make yeah. you go very well.
soon pass. It's 12 to zero. Good job, Mr. Chairman.